Okay. Hi, everybody. It's another Dystopian Dance Party podcast. I'm Zach, and this is Callie. And um, what the hell are we talking about? We've well, we've got we've got some things. Uh, <laughs> we got so we we had so much to talk about last time that we didn't really. Uh, I just yeah. forgot a whole bunch of. Shit. Yeah, we forgot a bunch of stuff. So, um, I know that Callie, you wanted to um, you. You attended that women's conference in Detroit, which I'm definitely curious about. Yeah. Um, Women's uh, conference. So I volunteered, which is why I was able to get in, um, because I was too rich for my blood. (laughs) It was like over $100 to go to the conference, which I get, um, but I wasn't about to pay that much. Right. But um, so I volunteered. Um, I was going to volunteer every day of the conference but um i was really sick at the time so i just did one i just picked the day that maxine waters was there (laughs) because i was like she was the main person i wanted to see and she was the um she was like the main speaker Mm -hmm. um and i am most interested in her anyway so i uh i pretty much volunteered early in the morning and um i was working at the like uh the accessibilities table which is like we were like the first table when you come in so because it was it was at Kobo um conference center Mm -hmm. um and I really wanted to go because it was in Detroit so I'm like let let me go to this well it's close to home it just it was just a cool thing to do yeah yeah is this like a is uh I am fairly I, I only really knew about it because it was because it was in Detroit and because there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of media attention because they asked they asked Bernie Sanders to speak there for mm-hmm. for some reason. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, is it like an annual conference that moves around or um, I, I mean, I'm guessing it's not in Detroit, you know, <laughs> all the time. So. Wait, I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> i i I just asked is it like an annual conference that moves around and i actually do not know i do not know sorry right now i'm i'm multitasking because i'm being an idiot i'm about to stop multitasking but i'm like i okay so i'm i'm um this is somewhat related but also different it's related in that it's uh to do with women but um (laughs) uh i'm like co-founding co-putting together whatever the fuck Mm -hmm. um uh women's artist collective Mm -hmm. so that's i was in the group chat trying to like (laughs) get shit together with that and then i we started recording and i'm still doing that because i am multitasking (laughs) for some reason i don't know but i put my phone down i'm done with that um yeah i don't know if it's it's it, like I'm sure it will become an annual thing. This was the first year, obviously, because the first Women's March was in January. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know where it'll be in the future. I I really don't know anything about it. I just wanted to do this year because I was like, well, what? I mean, like, especially since I could volunteer and get in for free. Right. Why not go and do it while it's in Detroit? Mm-hmm. Um. So I did. Does that answer your question? 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Long story short, I don't fucking know. Right, right. right. I mean, I, nobody listens to this podcast to be informed, so, you know. Yeah. Um, I did it because it's in Detroit. I got a free t-shirt. That's about it. Yeah. I got to see Maxine Waters. That was cool. That is cool. Um, and it, honestly, it was nice working at the accessibility table because... Uh, like that's one of the few, or uh, from what I understand, that w- that's like one of the first and and few places or like events like that that is so um, accessible to people mm. who are handicapped. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just nice because, like, I I didn't really do shit honestly. Like I was just kind of sitting. Like I did it because. Um, that I was fucking sick that week, and that was one of the one of the things you could do that just required you to sit there. Right. <laughs> so that's why I did it. So like they the the first couple of, of things like that where you were sitting at a table, I wanted to give um, women who actually had like knee problems and shit. I wanted to give them a like that opportunity because I like I could have stand and sit up if I wanted to, but I right. was not feeling it. Um, but then the like third opportunity they had, it was no more women with like arthritis or what the fuck ever. So I was like, okay, I'll sit down. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was pretty much just sitting by a table and, um, like no one really came. We had like, we had like large print, um, uh, like the map and whatever else, like the little pamphlet that they had. Right. <clears throat> Um, they had that in large print for, like, people who have poor eyesight, and, um, it had, like, you directed people to the wheelchairs that they had at Kobo, and, um, things like that. So, uh, but, but we didn't really have anybody who needed help, we just had, like, some people come up and were like, oh, like, if, if they had a disability, they were just, like, happy to see us there, because it was, like, some representation i i guess so people right. were really happy to see us there um and then even people who didn't have a disability were like wow you're doing a good job and i was like i'm just fucking sitting here yeah, yeah. but i mean i'm glad you feel that way you're, like this one woman came up and she was like you're angels and i was like i'm doing this because i get into the convention for free yeah but, th- but thank you <laughs> right. i'm doing this i'll take I, it i'm more of a broke bitch than an angel but okay yeah. um uh what else oh like yeah so maxine waters was cool i don't really have too much to say about her it was just like nice to see Mm -hmm. like like there's nothing i can say about anything she said that hasn't already been said by about anything else that she's ever said right (laughs) Right. it was just like oh that's cool it's maxine waters but um uh, one thing that kind of annoyed me <laughs> about <laughs> the women's convention is there, uh, and this kind of annoyed me about the women's march too. Just, just in general, right. like first of all, I'm trying not to be a hater because, like, I think what they're doing is really good, and mm-hmm. like, I, it's hard to organize things like that. And I, I get why they tend to be kind of like. Um, uh, like tried. It just seems like they're like appeasing white people and men. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I get uh, it know. because not everyone else is as like, uh, like, <laughs> like I don't give a fuck about men <laughs> right. or white people. I do not right. give a fuck. I I am not. I'm not trying to wait and like patronize people and yeah. I, I I don't have time for that shit. I'm gonna say what I say, and if you don't like it, that's too fucking bad. Right. But um. Like, like, they let a lot of men speak. Uh, like, um, Michaela Angela Davis and this other guy, I don't even fucking remember his name. It was, like, two people from TV One or something. Uh, um, <laughs> they they were, like, giving, uh, they, they introduced Maxine Waters. But the uh-huh. man was talking so fucking much and, like, talking over <laughs> Michaela Angela Davis. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, that pissed me off. Yeah. And then there's this whole part. I guess they had, um... I guess they had had a panel that was, like, confronting white womanhood, and uh-huh. it was pretty much four white women 
to like how how can white women help dismantle white supremacy basically right. which i think is a good thing i like i i went to a panel like that it wasn't at the women's convention uh-huh. but it was um just a panel that they had at the detroit uh history museum i went to that a couple months ago like probably back in september or something mm-hmm. and it was good um and it had like a good turnout and everything so like i do think it's good that white women are giving a fuck now right however <laughs> i don't think that you need to like fucking like you you deserve it like like giving white women a trophy because they're actually giving a fuck about black people that mm. type of shit like it was like you you all should be proud of yourselves i saw what like this one guy was saying like he was on the panel. I should have remembered his name, but I, I don't remember anything because I have too much going on. Um, but he was like, um, I think we all need to uh, give the white women who came out to the panel on dismantling of, or like handling white womanhood or what the fuck ever it was a hand because I've never heard women, white women admit that they would um, clutch their purse when black men walk by and things like that. And that's that's a great first step. So you stand up and give yourselves a hand. And I just sat mm. down. I'm like, I'm not giving any of these bitches a hand. Yeah. I hate shit like that. Because, yeah. I mean, that's like, why do you deserve a hand for admitting that you're garbage? Right. You don't. Right. You, don't even, yeah. you don't even deserve a hand if you do better because you're doing the absolute bare minimum. Right, right. You're just not yeah. being an asshole. Yeah, I don't. I don't really understand that. Uh, like, the, I don't either. And, and and I don't. And I don't. I don't understand like needing to be validated. You know, uh, like exactly, exactly. Well, when, yeah. and why? Why is that being? Um, why is that the standard for inclusiveness? It's like, in order for me to be included in dismantling white supremacy. I have to get a participation trophy. I hate that shit. It's like, yeah. no, like dismantling white supremacy, the the like least common denominator for, for dismantling white supremacy is that it benefits you personally because it does. White people right. will benefit off of dismantling white supremacy. It's a lie that we, that we benefit. Like white people benefit from white supremacy. Sure. Like that's undisputed, oh, but yeah. everyone would, definitely benefit more from the dismantling of it yeah Um, oh yeah absolutely um so that's like for selfish reasons and then even if even if you don't feel that way like just don't be garbage (laughs) i don't don't understand (laughs) that like why do you think that you need to be applauded for not being garbage yeah and it's stupid and i'm not fucking doing it at the panel that we went to um, which was was a really good panel, but the whole beginning of it was like that stupid participation trophy shit, where it's yeah. like, like oh, but, um, you should all be really proud of coming here. I want you all to uh, close your eyes and imagine <laughs> someone who would be really proud of you for showing up. And I was just like, "Is he, are you fucking kidding me? Who, who, no, I can't think of anybody in my life who would give a fuck about yeah, the Yeah, I don't even know here. what the value And they shouldn't. Of... <laughs> it's because white people need to feel va- like, oh, oh, I'm doing so much for showing right. up. Right, right. And confronting my racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that shit pisses me off. Um, <laughs> basically, I went to the women's convention to network Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i ended up just fucking hating everyone so (laughs) i think um uh yeah like another thing that happened and and this is the last this is the last thing i really have yeah to say about the convention um and this was like i feel like every time i go to a women's march related event some weird shit happens with Angela Davis that it just like pisses me off. Like at the women's March, obviously Angela Davis spoke. And by, by that point, I mean, granted part of this was because they didn't really like, it was the first year. So it wasn't totally planned out correctly. They had way, 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 way too many speakers. Um, And Angela Davis went on kind of like, she was one of the last. Mm -hmm. And so by that time people were like, chanting march 
which honestly, like, I don't really give a fuck about. I, I we didn't even march when I went with my friends, like, because it was too many damn people. I didn't give a fuck about marching. I was there to like watch Angela Davis. What, right, what is right. marching? I mean, marching does do something, I guess, but I, I, I was mean, standing there. in a big crowd on the mall or whatever is also is is accomplishing. Yeah, something. they just wanted everyone to see them in their fucking pussy hats and shit. Yeah. Like, I don't. I don't <laughs> So I wanted to watch Angela Davis, but by that point, like, everyone was chanting March, Mm -hmm. and you couldn't really hear her, and then, like, they showed Emma fucking Watson, which, by the way, I'm not mad at Emma Watson for this, I'm mad at the cameraman and the stupid fucking audience members, because as soon as they, they, like, took the camera off Angela Davis and put it on Emma Watson, and everyone, like, cheered, so I couldn't fucking hear what Angela Davis was saying, and I was like, I do not give a fuck about Hermione Granger right now, this is Angela (laughs) Davis. (laughs) I was, yeah. like, so, so upset. I was so upset. I was, like, cussing these stupid pink pussy at bitches out. Yeah. That is, and I did it, not care. You can fight me. That is really... It, Take it off is your really fucking f- Joanne Fabrics pussy hat, and we'll fight. <laughs> it is really fucked up that, you know, like, An- Angela Davis, like, she went to prison for the cause, you know? Like, it's... She went to prison, and she got herself out of prison. Right. And, and, what and, the fuck did you do, pussy hat? Yeah, and, and I'll tell you and, what you did. You walked to fucking Joanne Fabrics and bought some fucking <laughs> pink wool, and sewed yourself a stupid ass hat, and then you were like, "Oh well, nah, nah. Yeah. I don't understand why people have a problem with the pussy hats." <laughs> um, because not everyone has a pussy, and not everyone is pink. Right. So shut your ass up, Susan. <laughs> So anyway, that was me. Uh, I'm always I'm always making fr- making friends at women's yeah. events. <laughs> yeah, this is this is really why. Like, you, you know, it's it's unfortunate, but uh, I I think both of us are 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 poorly poor, poorly wired for like movements. You know, <laughs> you know, like yeah, I can't fucking deal. I cannot fucking deal with it because I can't deal with people. Period. Yeah. Like I will be a lone, a lone soldier in the revolution because I can't fucking deal with you, and I'm not gonna wait around for you to catch up. So I am right. just gonna have a gun, and that'll yeah. be me. Like I'll just be on the sidelines shooting into the crowd. That'll be yeah, me. Yeah, just Valerie Solanas. But... <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, this time, um, this time. It was, uh, there were these two women I was working with at the accessibility table, Mm -hmm. and, um, they were lovely women, but they were kind of (laughs) dumb. And, um, like, uh, there's one girl, okay, so, when, it all started when we were sitting at the table, and Michaela Angela Davis came in, Mm -hmm. and, like, I didn't actually know who she was. (laughs) before this full disclosure um so i had to look it up but um i didn't know who she was when she came in i just saw like a light-skinned lady with long blonde locks um i didn't know who she was so then the woman next to me was like i I just saw angela davis come in and i was like angela davis like i feel like i would have heard about if angela davis was coming to detroit for the women's convention (laughs) Right. <laughs> um so i was like i don't like i just like played along with it at first i was like really and then I, and then um she's like yeah i just saw her she was like light skin with with blonde locks and i'm like okay i saw that lady that was in no way shape or form angela davis like, <laughs> like we just saw her in january <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking about so then i i had the little app on my phone because i wanted to see like they had an app where you could like see the panels and who was speaking on them and stuff so i like i looked at it and it said michaela angela davis so i'm uh. like okay who the fuck is this so i looked her up and she's a she's a writer and uh shit like that right. um, I, mean, but, but, I mean she's done she's done things yeah but she's, but not, the, angela but she's not angela davis, davis. <laughs> yeah like, right yeah like, <laughs> um and and so that happened and then i like i just kept like i i just kept hearing them talk about it like her and the other lady i was working about working <laughs> with um so th- this is all in my head where I'm like, okay, it's Michaela Angela Davis. Got it. So I like moved about, but I kept like hearing them talk and she told the other lady who was like this like auntie lady from Flint, like she just like looked like 
just like default auntie. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm just, now I'm just being petty. <laughs> um, I I heard her telling her, and then the auntie was like telling other people. Um, because we had these two like interpreters, um, ASL interpreters who were. <laughs> Uh, sitting behind us because that's like they were at the accessibility table and then they would go to different panels like basically like wherever they were needed or I, I think um, uh-huh. so I heard the auntie telling them like um, yeah Angela Davis is here did you know that and they were like what I didn't know she was supposed to be here blah 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 um, <laughs> wait is she is she even allowed back in the country or is that um, or is that Nina Simone <laughs> I'm not <laughs> understand I understand that that sounds like I made it up I, that was verbatim what I heard and I was just sitting there like I didn't even know what to say I was almost going to correct them but then I'm like I don't even fucking care yeah. about these bitches like I do not care so like okay Angela Davis was never out of the country <laughs> Nina Simone is a was, singer and is dead like, it's, it's been dead for like 20 years yeah and she's dead <laughs> Right, so I guess yeah, you more, could more say she's not allowed in the like, country, but <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, how are you gonna mess up Asada Shakur with Dina Simone? How? <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, that was my that was me making friends at the women's convention. Right. Yeah. This is this is why we're so politically active. Uh, you actually are fairly politically active. I uh, I show uh, up for marches. I should be and more, but I. I say shit on on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I uh, you know, I try to throw a little money uh, to to causes uh, yeah. here and there. That's, that's I sign petitions. Yeah. I mean, none of the shit I'm doing matters. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean, the marches yeah. I've been to have honestly been like I went to a Black Lives Matter protest after um, Philando Castile died. Because mm-hmm. I felt like if I didn't, I was going to fucking go nuts. Like, right, that's why right. I went. So it was yeah. completely for me. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad yeah. I went. Like, I, I don't I don't have any illusions of, like, oh, I, I went to a Black Lives Matter. Like, I went because if I didn't leave the house, I was going to go crazy. Right, <laughs> like, right. And I couldn't even deal with it. Yeah, and it's it's really, you know, it's, it is it's it is really, like, thankless work because – I. I, I mean, ninety percent of I, I think pro I think protests in the in the like in the long view do affect change, but any yeah. single protest I think they look good. Yeah, and it, 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 and it's and it's like it it just has to be like a constant applying of pressure, you know, and it takes like years, and it takes yeah, you know millions of people yeah like, i think oh. that i think that <laughs> protests are like a starting point and they're really yeah. just like a visual aspect because then you have to do get out and do the groundwork and i feel like the women's march was a good way of like assembling a whole bunch of women and then giving them some resources because that was really when i started seeing the push to like keep calling uh your senators and right. shit like that which by the way i don't do because i don't like talking on the phone so i don't do that <laughs> i sign petitions too. i'm always I like sign why petitions. can't i email and i know that it's like that 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 the yeah. phone works better i, I will also say that i i am all like i live in like i i was in virginia uh, northern virginia which is like super democrat i i actually i actually did email i i sent a letter to um to my my local representatives about the first um, Muslim ban, and I was like, I hope you don't support this. And the guy was like, uh, you know, I, I definitely don't support it, and you should come to this to this uh, you know event that I'm holding in Alexandria. And I was like, I've done my part. Like, I don't I don't I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need to <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, I don't need to actually interact with any people. Like, <laughs> I'm just just glad yeah. you know. Like, we we established that and. Uh, and I'll, I'll see you next All right. uh, next election. Good talk. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's my thing is like I my senators are like 
Debbie Stabenow. And right. And I don't yeah. know. I should we, do more with that, but I just, I don't want to fucking call. Like, I don't even like to call to set up doctor's appointments. I don't want to call to have to beg for my health care. Like, I just, I mean, I understand that you at this point have to, but it's like, I'll just, I'll just fucking die. Like, right. I don't even care anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a, like, th- that's how you know you have social anxiety when you would, you would rather die of a uh, of uh, an illness <laughs> that you can't you can't be treated for then 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 call your senator but and i and i completely yeah, identify exactly. with that <laughs> yeah i'll like i'll go to marches i went to a, a march um about the the muslim ban in hamtramck it was just like a little like in front of the hamtramck like it was basically just like we stand by immigrants Right, which is like it's Hamtramck, so you yeah, better. Yeah, I mean that's like 90, <laughs> yeah, so ninety um, percent of the population. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I went to that. I've been to a Black Lives Matter march. I went mm. to an anti-Trump march, like the day that he was elected, and it was fucking stupid. And I went home. <laughs> yeah. And then I went to the women's march, and like pretty much all of those were just like because I needed to do something. Right. Um, and I was just like a, a like. Like, I, yeah, like I said, I don't have any illusions that I'm actually doing anything. I'll yeah. sign petitions online. Um, I've sent emails out, but it's like I I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know, man. <laughs> like it's just like <laughs> shit is bleak. Right. But, um. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. But, you know, okay. I I have a lot of respect for people who who um who can be activists i think there's definitely more that i could do but i am also yeah I, i'm just kind of a fatalist you know i just kind of i i i just think shit is going to be awful until it's until it's not you know <laughs> you know what i mean or yeah or I it'll mean, just keep being it, awful and it'll keep getting worse and worse <laughs> i i mean to a to a certain extent i feel like my life's work is activism because even my art to a certain extent is activism and i think everyone just has to spearhead their own fucking cause and do it mm-hmm. and do it in their own way so i mean i feel like i'm doing something but i realize i'm not doing that much but at the same time it's like if i'm not moved to do that much like you know yeah I mean, sometimes I'm sometimes... already overwhelmed by like working my shitty retail job and like <laughs> yeah. doing my art. That that's like enough for me. That's yeah. that's all I can do. I mean, yeah. Sometimes just like living your your best life uh, can be political. <laughs> you know, I mean. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I give um I I like will donate money. I donated money to and I mean this 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 is this isn't really activism. This is just like not being trash right but i've like donated <laughs> money to ca- certain causes or like when i see someone needs money or like I'll, I'll give some money to my artist friends if i have the money to give which is right. not, not very often right and like when it is a, a cause that i can donate to it's like 10 or 25 dollars like 25 max yeah <laughs> i haven't the only thing i i when i had there was a period of time where i had like a ton of money like mm. when i first got my job and i just like donated 50 dollars to an artist that i like um mm. because i had said that i was gonna i was gonna give him money and like people give people have given me money to go to san francisco and stuff and that was like one way i could get back right but um oh and i i gave some money to a um a woman i really like on twitter she's a sex worker and mm-hmm. like a sex therapist and mm-hmm. i like engage in a lot of her content so i sent her 25 bucks mm-hmm. so like that that's that's my brand of activism it's <laughs> granted it's passive but yeah. You know, whatever. That's the best I can do. I wanted to ask about was you had a you had a, another show recently uh just at the beginning of this month right uh yeah sorry i completely forgot about that i mean it wasn't my it wasn't a solo show right right it was um i actually the opening was friday mm-hmm. it was um 
a sex positive um, exhibit that was in um, it, it was on World AIDS Day, so it was about HIV positivity as well as sex positivity. So if you're in the Detroit area, it's at the Baltimore Gallery, which is on Baltimore Street, mm-hmm. um, and it's up until the 18th, I believe. Okay. But yeah, there's a website about it which we should put in the like the show notes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, my picture is up there. <laughs> my picture in my bio and everything is on the website but yeah i had one piece in that it was a watercolor of magnum condoms and chocolate wrappers and that's on the poster so basically too. my my bedside table yeah yeah it was the um it was the flyer that they used like yeah the, yeah the only flyer they had was my piece so that was pretty cool yeah i don't know what else, what else has gone i i i know you uh did you want to talk about the concerts that you've been going to? I have nothing. I I really have nothing to uh, to bring to the table. Like my my life has been really boring. So <laughs> <laughs> any any right updates? Uh, no, they, they've they've remained. My the roids are still in in remission. So uh, I'm uh, <laughs> two two months roid free. um yeah so pretty much everything that happened to me happened like last week yeah (laughs) like in the last two weeks um i saw jay-z on the 20th of november Mm, yeah we had to drive all the fucking way out to cleveland yeah he did 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 detroit sell out or did he not come to detroit no, we didn't buy the tickets. It was me and um, Michael. So uh-huh. he works at Quicken. Holy oh. Shit. I can't fucking shit up. Um, yeah, he works at Quicken. And so, like, there's the Quicken Loans Arena out in Cleveland. Because oh. Dan Gilbert owns it. That, that's why that's why he wins free tickets to shit. Because it's the stuff that Dan Gilbert owns. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So we had to drive three fucking hours to see Jay-Z. <laughs> he, he had played in Detroit the night before. Yeah, <laughs> but like it, but, neither you know, of us are really big Jay Z fans, but it was free. So and his like, tickets are fucking expensive. Yeah, like I was, I was like half thinking they're cheaper about this it. time around. But even still, like I don't, I don't know, it, it was cool. I've, I've, I've heard it's a, a pretty good Jay-Z show. Fan. Yeah, like I, I, um, I, I, I still am. I, I'm still mad at myself that I didn't see uh, the Watch the Throne tour because. Uh, if if you weren't aware, I am a huge Kanye fan. It's kind of it's a it's a point of contention for some people, but uh, but I but I do I I do love uh, especially in concert. Kanye is great, and um, you know and, and I and I do kind of like I I, I do regret uh, missing Watch the the Throne when I had the chance, but but yeah, like I you know I was I was kind of thinking about it when he announced the tour, and then I looked it up, and I was like. Tickets were, you know, and I'm in Washington, D.C. too, which I, I'm sure the tickets are more expensive here than they are in Detroit. They were, uh. it, it, you know, over $100. And I was like, eh, eh sorry, Jay. Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, I, I like the blueprint. Did you like his new album? I What I've heard of it, I, I, I thought it was, I, I haven't listened to it all the way through because, like, the whole title exclusive thing gets on my nerves and, uh, I didn't care oh. enough to to. I heard it, it bootleg, so I yeah. didn't pay for that shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I find you. I you could literally just look it up and find it. Yeah, I I liked what I heard of it. I liked you know story of OJ. Um, the production's really good. Uh, I like you know no ID. I, I I like his production style. Um, I find uh he sounds kind of like tired or something <laughs> like, you know, like I, his, yeah. I, I don't know. His, his, uh, his flow just seems a little like lackadaisical or something, but, but I mean, it's, it, it, I've never liked Jay-Z for that reason though. Like I, yeah. I just, I don't really like his voice straight up. Like it right. just kind of annoys me, right. but I listen to Danny. Brown. <laughs> I, I was going to say that now we can transition <laughs> to, to, to the Danny Brown show you went to. Yeah. Well, I have a little bit more to say about Jay. I, like basically, I just, it was just like we didn't stay for the whole time because it was like we had to drive three fucking hours to get yeah. back, and so like we pretty much like 
I heard fuck with me, you know I got it. And that's all I really need to hear. I was like, all right, we can go now. <laughs> I hope there are no Jay-Z fans bring... listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? Like, okay. I I have some beef with Jay-Z, though. And by beef, I mean completely one-sided, obviously, because he does not give a fuck about my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, like, I don't know. Like, I, like, never really cared for him. Yeah. Because I just didn't really like his his voice, and I just was ambivalent. Right. But then, like, I like my ex was really into Jay-Z, so I'm like, okay. Like, I kind of got into him a little bit. Mm. Never really, like, particularly liked his music, but I'm like, okay. Um, and then, like, the, like, even, even after Lemonade came out, I'm like, oh, okay, well, he cheated on her, so whatever. But yeah. then this album, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, first of all, you, you really, like... Like with Beyonce, it's like okay when when she came out with her, I don't even like to say side of the cheating because it's like really right. really lemonade should have come out. There shouldn't have been any like let me tell my side of the story type bullshit. Yeah, I mean, it, but it, like it, you hear it, that, it, and it's, it's a, like it's a, it's a really good album, whether it's based on reality or not. Right, yeah, the whole right soap exactly. Opera thing like, is and I don't I don't really care about his side, or at least right. I didn't think I did. But then after hearing four forty four, I actually like am annoyed like <laughs> i just feel like i just feel like i i'm sick of i'm sick of doing men's emotional labor yeah. <laughs> i'm sick of i'm sick of other women having to do men's emotional labor right so i'm coming from it from that because it's like it, it's a point where he's like you matured faster than i did and i'm like weren't you like 50 yeah <laughs> and she I was know. like 19 what the I, fuck yeah. are you talking about i know like, yeah uh, they were they were never the same age and I'm, right and then it's right. also and like he's giving... jay-z and he's married to beyonce so like like, like yeah. i don't know to me and i'm not like an alpha male you know but but to me if if you're in a if you're in a relationship that unevenly matched you should you should hang on to it by your fingernails. You know what I mean? Like if if yeah. I'm married to Beyonce, I'm not gonna be fucking around with anybody. <laughs> like, well, especially like, if I'm Jay Z. Who would you fuck around with? Who would you fuck around? Now, here's the thing about Jay Z: if people say he's ugly, I don't really think he's. No, ugly. he's, he's, he's actually know. not. I think, I, think I, 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 I don't like his haircut right now. He's got he's got that like. Yeah, I'm not a fan. He's got that that like long ish hair that looks like he just hasn't gotten his haircut in a while. Like it, it doesn't yeah, it makes needs, him look old. He needs to get it shaved. Like, right. He needs, he needs a haircut. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I agree with that. But I just, I don't like how when people like mercilessly call Jay Z ugly. Cause I'm like, I right. Don't, I don't think he's ugly. Like right. I just, I just don't. Yeah. Um, but even even that's beside the point. It's like no matter what you look like, why the fuck would you cheat on Beyonce? Right. Like, yeah. and I know it's not <laughs> yeah. about being. I know it's not about being exceptional, and it's not about looks. Because right. if people, if if dumbass men are gonna cheat, they're gonna cheat regardless. But yeah. I just feel like, why would you like? Who the fuck would you cheat on? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and, who, and who why? Is the like, like younger, prettier. You know, the that's the cliche is that it's going to be like some younger, sexier woman. I mean, you can go younger right. than Beyonce, but is anyone sexier than Beyonce? Like, I, I, right. I, I don't no. know. <laughs> or more beautiful, and, and even younger. It's like I, I don't know. Like, I just don't get it. Like, I yeah. can see if someone cheated on me, I'd be like, mm, makes sense. But Beyonce, I'd be like, the fuck, the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and even then it's like i know that that's not even why right like that the, like the fact that i i know i know in theory that that shouldn't even matter but right. it just like that's one thing i do think about I'm like <laughs> who, the, who the fuck but um so there's that and then also just i can't forgive him for his verse on big mama thing <laughs> I just, I, I just can't. That sh- that song is so good, and then Jay Z like hops on it with his goofy voice. I'm like, God damn it! Like I, I love that song. Like the, I just found out what the sample is too. It's um, it's a Sylvester song. Ah. Uh. Cause I had been wondering like, what the fuck is this? This is sweet as shit. It's um, it's a Sylvester song. I can't remember hmm. what it's called though. But I'm like obsessed with that song. Yeah. And I was listening to it because it was just like, uh, like suggested on on spotify and i'm like all right 
hell yeah, I love Sylvester. And I'm listening <laughs> to it, and then I'm like, this is Big Mama thing. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that's why I can't forgive Jay Z about Big Mama thing. Right. Or cheating on Beyonce. Yeah, cheating on Beyonce so, was was really just the, the that was his second close and second final strike. Yeah. Close second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How big and untrust you in the studio with me? Don't they know I'm trying to set you continuously? Pull a high power cool, make you jump ship. Lead who you with, run with the Rockefeller crew. Trick you for the cheese, tear your boom up. Spread an ill rumor, make you flip on little Z's. Twist you backwards, get the dough from your platinum hits. Rock little Kim hats and shit. I guess down and dirty for the dough, I got love. And big know it, he must got the studio bug. Probably as we speak, he's on his way up the street with the mop. Your thugs and all types of heat But I ain't trying to beef, I'm just trying to eat And horizontally, the way I hold my eye is sweet And know my niggas, but I like the sound Little Kim and Jigger sound like figures Um, but yeah, other than other than that, it was it was a pretty good show. Like I think the the design was cool. I liked how it opened like with the flames eating his eye. Like he had like pictures of himself, and then he, it was like in flames. Like I mm. thought that was cool. It was just him alone on a stage with like a live band, mm. and that was cool too. Um, it was like two drummers or something. Hmm. And then Vic Mensa opened. He was wearing like a red leather suit. <laughs> 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 but Big Benson was good too. Yeah. I like I like that performers are performing with live bands. Thanks, Kanye. I know. Yeah, that's every everything Thanks about this Kanye Jay-Z for tour. the live band and the set design. Right. Yeah, Kanye invented the live band. Uh, every um, all of these. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything about Jay Z's tour seems very Kanye. Like the, um, you know, the the, yeah, the art, yeah, the art style is like. St- I mean, four forty four. Also, he like he jacked that straight off of uh, uh, the St. Pablo tour. You know, like <laughs> this that the the like kind of like mm-hmm. off orange color and then the like big off center letters and all that stuff. You know, he's definitely uh, he's 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 definitely Jay Z um, is a swagger jacker. You hear yeah. it here first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the best thing though was that we got six months off title, like a free trial of title yeah. for six months. But <laughs> but the thing about that is that I've only used it to listen to fuck with me. You know, I got it like twenty times. <laughs> so I'm like, there's nothing on here that I can't get on Spotify except fuck with me. You know, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and what and the Danny Brown show is the other thing that I wanted to hear about. Danny Brown was cool. I mm-hmm. love Danny Brown. Lil um, B was there too, right? I, Lil B was there. We actually left during Lil B because it was like I, we had just been there for a long time. Yeah, and like was it like one it of those rap shows alone, that are like hours long? Yeah, and we came like we came later like we didn't get there like we didn't do the thing we did with two chains was to show up as soon as the door opened and never again um <laughs> when we came it was this band i don't even know who the band was called i should probably like have looked that up before we started recording but yeah. um nobody it was like meh this. like yeah exactly no one gives a fuck <laughs> um they the the group that we walked in on they were like it was like it could have been good but i just wasn't feeling it um mm-hmm. And then there was like a DJ after that, and then Danny Brown came out. And he was good. He was better than he was last year, I think. Last year, I I got the feeling like he just didn't. He wasn't really into it. <laughs> like, I mean, he performed, but he like didn't really talk to the audience too much and whatever. But this time, he was like talking to the audience. He like ran through his set. It was a pretty good set. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He told us like not to. The 2018 we're respecting women. Um. <laughs> It was he kept giving like dad advice. He yeah. was like uh I know he like, fixes his teeth and now he's driving. like a fucking elder statesman. Like <laughs> Well he's like almost he's pushing forty, so I get it, but Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kinda hilarious though. I like seeing Danny Brown like give you positive life advice. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I, need I, like, to, I genuinely do. I'm not even. I, I need to uh, catch up on his Twitch again because <laughs> I've always. I think. Oh, I, I know. I, he said something the other day about how he's gonna start recording again. I love his Twitch. Yeah. I don't even like play video games like that anymore. Right. And it's just like, 
Yeah, I'll just watch anything that Danny Brown does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just because it's like fun to watch to me. Like, yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So that was a good show. I always it, it, that's like my birthday gift every year is I go and see Danny Brown because <laughs> my birthday is the twenty fifth. Uh, so my birthday gift for myself is like I'm gonna go see Danny Brown because he does like the Bruiser Thanksgiving thing in Detroit every year. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's my birthday gift to myself every year. <laughs> Um, and Lil B was there this time, so that was sweet. Like, we stayed long enough to see Lil B, but, um, at least, at least here, I don't think he was that good live. But I've never seen him before, so I don't, like, I really love, I, I love Lil B, and I really like this new mixtape. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it, and my back really hurt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I like, know, it's, I, I always feel like and such I, a, like such an old loser when I'm at a, when I'm at a show and you know, this happened to me with Kendrick Lamar. It was like, he just kept going and going and it was like, it was great, but it was like, I'm also yeah. elderly and I like, I have scoliosis and I want to go home and rest my back. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah, like right. Kendrick, can you stop rapping so hard? Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, we get it. Like, You're really good. Honestly, <laughs> I, I usually stay towards, I I usually stay for the whole show, but this time yeah. I just like I don't, I was just sick of these fucking people. Cause that's another thing is like okay, so last year Danny Brown was kind of more cle- low key, uh-huh. but his audience was also more low key, and it was like <laughs> white boys were just like passing me blunts and stuff, and I was yeah. like hell yeah, and I was just like take a token or whatever, pass yeah. it on. So that was cool. This time it was like some crazy white people there, like they were like. <laughs> Like, we were nowhere near, like, a mosh pit area, and there was, like, I, and this has happened to, like, a couple shows I've been to where, like, people just fucking push me, and it's, like, whatever, <laughs> like, I, I don't like it, but, um, it's just weird because I never stand, like, right by the stage or somewhere where, like, if people start moshing, I'm not like, oh, why are you guys pushing? Right. Like, I always stand, like, <laughs> yeah. with, like, the low-key people and the couples, but then some asshole will, like, push me. And that makes no fucking sense to me, because I'm, like, I'm small. Like, I'm a small girl. Like, yeah. what the fuck do you think? Like, why do you need to push me? Right. You could just, like, tap me, and I would move. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, like, I'm not imposing in any way, shape, or form. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was there, like, my thing at shows is, like, I'm fucking socially anxious. So, even when I do, because I used to, like, pregame before I go to shows, I would, like, drink some soco in a mug and in my car and then yeah. go in and be like all right i'm set <laughs> i don't really do that anymore um i mean i might in the future but i didn't really want i just haven't felt like it lately yeah but um and also i like fucked up soco for myself because i got like way too turnt at the dirty show last year <laughs> and now i can't really fuck with soco anymore <laughs> um, perhaps more on that at a later date <laughs> yeah. but um so i need to find another like plastic bottle of liquor to keep in my car <laughs> right <laughs> but anyway um <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, like, my protocol at being at concerts is just, like, I, like, find a pole and just, like, hold the pole the whole time and, like, enjoy myself quietly and low-key. But, yeah. like, this time I was with Michael and he's, like, he's, like, six seven, so he was, like, portable pole for me, so I just, like, <laughs> lean on him. But it was, like, people, like, still fucking pushing. Mm. And so he was, like, pushing people away. Like, yeah. li- like getting pissed and, like, pushing them. So he was, like, a portable attack pole, yeah. which is even better. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, like I just don't get that. Like, why do you have to push to get to get to the stage when it's like room? So you're just being an asshole and like throwing your weight around. Yeah, it's. I, I, I don't even I, get it. I always, you know, like I, I, uh, I identify, uh, you know, philosophically with, um, with, with punk, but I, like, moshing is just the dumbest shit ever. Like, and I've always hated it, even when I was young. I'm actually amazed that when I was in my twenties going to shows in Detroit that I never got in a physical fight because I would definitely, like I, I would get so f- fucking mad when like, especially when I'd see people like, uh, you know, jostling, uh, smaller women around. Like I'm, I'm actually surprised that, that I didn't 
kick somebody's ass or 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 get my ass kicked <laughs> when I when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, okay. See, that's the thing is like I don't have a problem with moshing. If you want to do that, that's completely fine. I don't want to do that, which is why I'm in a section right. with me and all the other small women and right. their boyfriends, or even just small women by themselves, and we're not fucking moshing. We're sitting here enjoying the show just like you. We pay tickets just like you. Yeah. So like. We're in our own fucking section. I'm not. In, I'm not imposing my like low key self on the moshing people. I'm not like in the mosh, like going like, "Oh, why is everybody pushing each other?" Yeah, Do-do-do. yeah. I'm not. Like, I'm. I'm like doing my own thing. But it'll be people like you, white men. It'll be white men who are just like. <laughs> It, they go from I don't even know where the fuck they come. It, it'll be like one song will come on and they're like, "Oh, I gotta get to the stage right yeah. now!" And then yeah. they like push everybody, like not even like you know, like wiggling your way through so you can. It's like I gotta push everyone out of my way so that I can get to the stage to push more people. Like right. just like fucking wait to push people until you get up there. And why do you have to small to um to push? small women out of the way to, to get there it's so stupid yeah. like just chill out this won't be the last time you hear this fucking song <laughs> yeah. you're gonna be okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. the only song i get that way too is, is uh, um... fuck with me you know i got <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was pushing people out the way for that <laughs> no um let's see what are the what are the songs i get way too hyped to <laughs> frankenstein uh... Frankenstein, <laughs> um, by the Edgar Winter Group, uh, six seven nine Fetty Wap. Yeah, <laughs> uh, obviously. Um, Rocky Mountain Way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I watched a Rocky Mountain Way. I feel like a slow mosh pit. <laughs> I feel like there's definitely been um, like I, owner I, of I a lonely def- heart. <laughs> 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 Just imagine. <laughs> uh, and you can still rock in America. That's it. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <This is> shortlist. <laughs> I really want to fuck someone up to you can still rock in America. <laughs> I've just been like I've been doing, you know, mostly pretty low key stuff. Um, I did play uh, Super Mario Odyssey. It's really great. I don't have that much to say about it. It's a Mario game. It's really good. Um, so that's pretty. That that that's that's been uh, that's been a lot of my free time. Doing a lot of writing. Uh, the my. My end of year uh, top ten stuff is all kind of coming out that I wrote for for Slant, and uh, so uh, we'll do our top ten podcast or, or not top ten, but our like end of year podcast uh, at the end of the year. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. but if anybody out there wants wants to know what my favorite songs of the year are, you can um, those those are out now, um, and I think albums should be coming out later this week. Uh, went to see Lady Bird the other day. It was like, it was good, but, um, I, I, everybody's kind of like raving about it. And, um, I just thought it was good. Um, I mean, it was, I thought it was really good, but I, I'm not like, I'm not like hyped about it. You know what I mean? Um, 
But it was a you know it was a it was a nice it was a nice little like slice of life movie. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I've been hearing about that. I don't I don't know too much about it. I don't really go see movies, so it's I don't not either. I yeah, uh, yeah. I don't see many movies, and I was like I was like not super excited about going to see Lady Bird because if I'm gonna see a movie, I want it to be violent. Uh, and I was like, this doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this doesn't sound like anybody's gonna get killed in it, so I don't know if this is worth my my money. Um, but you know I, what I saw that was violent and also a slice of life was that three billboards outside of what the fuck ever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah, you heard somebody, of that movie? Yeah, somebody was talking, telling me it about was trash. it, and, and I and I was like, it was oh, that, trash. oh uh, yeah. I heard it wasn't as good as the reviews were saying. Yeah. Yeah, like. We went because we had, like, I, I hadn't heard of it because I don't see movies, but Michael had been saying, like, that it was reviewed really well, uh, so we right. went just for the hell of it, and it was just fucking weird, like, I don't know. Yeah. It was, like, weird and gratuitously violent. Like, right. a whole bunch of shit happened, like, they went and, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Without giving too much away. I just yeah. wasn't a fan. Yeah, that's the so, only movie. That's the only movie I've seen in like forever. Like I don't think I've seen a movie since De- uh, December. Mm. Yeah, so I don't see movies. But yeah, <laughs> that that was a violent slice of life. So if you want to yeah. marry the two, there you go. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I I guess our verdict is uh, Lady Bird not violent enough. Uh, three billboards too violent. <laughs> so somewhere, yeah, somewhere in between. <laughs> or it was like not even too violent. It was just like stupid violence. Yeah, like, like there, it was no point. Right. And like shit was happening. It's like they would go to jail. Like, mm, I don't know. like it was this one point where she like took she like took a um dentist tool uh-huh. and like drilled through the dentist's finger, <laughs> and he pressed charges, but. The dude was dying of cancer, so he was like, let her go. But by dude, I mean, like, the police chief uh-huh. who was on the billboards. And then, like, he ended up killing himself, and it was just fucking dumb. Mm, I was yeah. mad. <laughs> but I didn't have to pay for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I remember what I wanted to... This is, this is another thing. This is another thing that you did, but... Um, Okay, well, so uh, first of all, to segue into this, another movie I saw last month was uh, Thor Ragnarok. It was it was good. Gold, yes! Gold in it. Uh, oh, wait, I was thinking you meant the, the Thor. Uh, never mind. I mean, no, that's uh, we are going to segue into that, but I but I was but I was going to start. Okay, okay. No, no, no. S- I thought you meant the Thor. The, there's a documentary about the Thor that we're going to segue about. So that's oh, what I thought you were talking about. Oh no, yeah, I, d- I didn't Thor see Ragnarok. that. No, this is the Thor. This is the movie yeah. with um, what's his face? The uh, you know, the muscle, the Australian muscle man. Muscle. Um, the uh, hunk. <laughs> what? <laughs> The hunk. Yeah, the hunk. <laughs> you know how Steve Brill will call muscular men hunks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was good. You know, that's a, that's one that everybody has been talking about, and I and I was kind of like, really a Thor movie? Because like I saw the first one, and it was like funny, but it was not that great. This one's this one is really good. Um, Jeff Goldblum's in it, so obviously, you know, I I was a fan. Um, my one complaint what does he though. Do so this it? this is a movie called Thor Ragnarok. On two occasions in this film, they have a, they have a, a, a like a, a battle scene or whatever where it's playing immigrant song by Led Zeppelin, <laughs> which is like okay, cool, I get the connection. But why did they have to play it twice when there is a perfectly good song called Ragnarok by John Michael Thor? Like, wow, yeah, right. Who was programming the music for this movie? Like, what the fuck? I, I, right, I, right. I, I, it's it it, infu- it infuriates me. It's as bad. It's as bad as the movie Baby Driver, not including the song Baby Driver by Kiss, because <laughs> because it, it does have it does have the song Baby Driver by Simon and Garfunkel. But we all know that the Kiss version, the the Kiss song, is superior. <laughs> 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 so that's yeah. my uh that that's my one complaint about Thor Ragnarok that uh it it didn't have Ragnarok by Thor 
And uh, and that's also my segue <laughs> to um, to you meeting John Michael Thor, which I was so like, uh, I, I was so vicariously excited about. Yes, and you should have been because it was amazing. <laughs> um, so, I f- I saw on Facebook mm-hmm. um, one of my friends. Shout out to Alan Bennett. Uh, he said that he was um you, you know like when people are, are going to an event or whatever it shows up on your feet or whatever yeah yeah so yeah. he his event the event he was going to was thor <laughs> in ferndale john michael thor <laughs> and i was like what also <laughs> it was on november 25th my birthday and it was on a saturday <laughs> and i had the day off yeah, it's like the so, stars align. Fuck yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, exactly. So I told Rachel, my friend Rachel is living in Kentucky right now, and she's coming down for that weekend. So like last year we saw Sebastian Bach. That was our like washed up <laughs> rock star of the year. And it was funny because like a, a couple weeks ago, she, like we were reminiscing about that. And she was like, we need to find someone and like get like meet a new a new watch of rock star every year and i was like you're right let me we'll see if we can find one and then this came up yeah like law of attraction type shit like right. it just popped up out of nowhere yeah like you, just, here, you manifested me... thor <laughs> totally um so yeah he was in ferndale so we i we drove down there separately because she was coming from kentucky obviously uh-huh um, or actually, I think she had been coming from Troy because I think she came the night before. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So uh, it was at this record store called Found Sound, which I had never been to, but I want to go back because it seemed like a cool record store. Mm-hmm. So we both got there about two. So the event had been going on for an hour, but all we missed was Thor performing, which honestly, I, I was not <laughs> mad that I missed that. Because um, I heard the tail end of it and it uh, was questionable. Yeah. But, you know... <laughs> Um, I love Thor, though, even, like, I I feel, like, bad about talking shit about him, because he was such a nice guy. Yeah, he's an incredibly nice guy, yeah. Right, he's, like, the nicest guy ever, like, he was happy to say hi to everyone, he was happy to sign whatever you wanted, he, like, gave me a hug and it wasn't, like, creepy, like, (laughs) I felt weird around Sebastian Bach. Right. But, um, Thor, it was, like, he was just, like, I knew him, like, he was a grandfather yeah. or something he was just really nice and like cuddly because he's fat now yeah. um, <laughs> and i got him to sign my um my dvd of rock and roll nightmare mm-hmm. he signed my name incorrectly because everyone thinks my name is kelly yeah. which is like i should have spelled it out but i just like was i just said my name's kelly and he was like okay so he said to kelly yeah Happy birthday, rock on, and then he <laughs> signed it and put 2017. <laughs> so that was my that was my second 26th birthday present to myself was getting Thor to sign my DVD. Yeah, that's a that's so a that good. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, 26th birthday presents to myself, going to see Danny Brown and meeting John Michael Thor. Yeah, that's not bad. It was a success. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a pretty good. Uh, that, that's the can't. Uh, can't knock that for for birthday presents. Yeah, Thor was the first uh, when I first started like freelancing. I was writing for the City Pulse in Lansing, and um, and he was the the first story I wrote was about John Michael Thor coming and playing like um, I don't know like Max Bar or something in in Lansing, and uh, and I re- and I remember I, I I called him from Mackinac Island. Uh, I was up there with with our with our um, can't remember if you were there or not, but but I but I was I was up there with our parents for sure, and um and I was uh, there. I was yeah. there. I remember it. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, and um, yeah. He was just he was just like super nice. Like he's he's so like enthusiastic. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it seems weird to be. I think I mentioned this in our podcast about rock and roll nightmare. It seems weird to be like praising a a rock star for his his enthusiasm <laughs> and his like chipper attitude but um you know he is canadian so that kind of it <laughs> but, right um, yeah but yeah he he's just this the sweetest guy and like i i really i you know i i i really wish him the best like <laughs> his uh you know his 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 music has has like never been incredible <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh but um 
but I, you you have to you have to admire him just for you know he's he he never he he gives a hundred ten percent at all times you know like this is a guy who like had people jackhammer cinder blocks off of his chest on stage and uh, yeah you know like oh he was talking <laughs> about that too someone someone asked him I I overheard it while we were waiting um to get our shit signed um. I overheard someone saying, like, are you going to do any of the show, like, the cinder blocks and stuff? And he was like, well, you know, you, you really got to push the music. And I was like, eh, do the cinder blocks, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's about the music. You got to push the music. And I was like, no. Probably put, let that take a back seat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's uh, just, I, I'm, I'm definitely excited about that. Um, Cause some like, you know, I love his movies. I, I mean, it's rock and roll nightmare. I love rock and roll Na- nightmare. Um, it's amazing. His... We watched it later that night. <laughs> yeah. His, his videos. I, I got this. Um, I, I remember also around the same time that I interviewed him, I got this DVD uh, that they put out that was like a compilation of like videos and TV spots and stuff. And like, it is amazing. Like there's, you know, my favorite, do you remember the, uh, the commercials? He shot like these local commercials for like, a, uh, what I think it was for like, <laughs> for like a metal, uh, radio show. Yeah. Yep. I love the anthology is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially because so for the so for the um the commercials they they include like the you know the lead time into before he delivers the the like pitch and so he'll be like you know tune in for the you know for the power hour on on w whatever and then like it the, this is when the commercial is supposed to cut and he's like in a really intense pose and he's <sighs> yeah is he like growling like? Arr. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, with yeah, you know. I love that. And apparently, there's a new um, there's a new documentary about him. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, excited. I, to see I really that. want to watch that. Yeah, and that's what I thought you were talking about when you said you saw the. Thor and like I heard Thor and I immediately like I that's the thing is like I kept telling people I'm gonna see Thor on my birthday and they were like oh really like you're going yeah. to see the, why are you is, waiting is that, is, for your birthday still in to theaters? see the yeah. Thor movie <laughs> right. and I was like no 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 John Michael Thor. right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> important distinction yeah I'm not gonna see that that hunk So yeah, um, I mean, other than that, uh, you know, started watching Christmas movies. I think I'm gonna make. I think I'm gonna make um, my son watch. Uh, like every every year since he was born, basically, I've tried to subject him to Muppet Family Christmas, and like it, it comes and goes because like when he was little, he would just like watch. He would just stare at you know anything, and then and then he got into like his picky phase where it's like he only wants to watch. Rudolph and Frosty the Snowman, and this year I think he might be more open-minded because now he'll like he'll like put up a fight at first if it's something he doesn't recognize, but then he'll like it and he'll and he'll sit there and watch it. So I think I'm I'm gonna try to force yeah. Muppet Family Christmas on him. I'm gonna try to make him watch um, what's that that Rankin Bass movie that's like weird, um, The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. The moment- Oh okay, yeah, that one. That one's actually really good. Yeah, I was that one's my shit. Oh yeah, that one. That one's also my shit in a different way. <laughs> that one's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was. Uh, I love that one. 
For so many reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't, like, he Miser and Snow Miser are two of the best characters ever created. And yeah. You can fucking fight me about Yeah, it. they're the greatest, they're, they're some of the best gay icons of, of the 20th century. Right, exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I was gonna write a um I was gonna write a piece about uh, uh about the Rankin Bass holiday specials last year, but um like most of the things that I was gonna write about for Dystopian Dance Party, I didn't have time and I just you know eighty six it. But um but I am a I, I am a big fan of the Rankin Bass uh specials uh both the. You know, both the canonical ones like Rudolph and the less canonical ones like The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus, which is like a weird. Yeah, it's like uh, it, it's like Santa Claus meets Lord of the Rings, basically. <laughs> it's so fucking. Yeah, weird. <laughs> I love honestly, I like that one and um, Year Without a Santa Claus more than I like Rudolph. And I know that that's completely <laughs> sacrilegious, yeah. but here's why. Here's why. Um. Santa Claus is a fucking dick. He is. He is horrible. Yeah, he's he's really. He's a dick. <laughs> like, like in the song Rudolph, mm-hmm. Santa isn't a dick. Like the other reindeer are assholes. Right. But Santa, Santa, if anything, is, like, is sort of oblivious in the song. Like he, yeah, he doesn't really come into it until the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, you have a nice nose. Okay, we we can use. It. In right. this, it's like they. Everyone like um, like Rudolph's differences are exploited by everyone, yeah. <laughs> and he's annoying. Of like they don't really want him. They they don't really fuck with him until there's fog, and then Santa's like, right? Like, get, why don't you turn your fucking nose down? Wait a minute. <laughs> like I hate that shit. Like, <laughs> get this fucking red light on my way. Yeah, it's so bright I could. Hey, let me right. find out a way I can profit. From yeah, this. exactly. It's basically like, the whole thing is just. Yeah, Rudolph is useful. That's that's his his redemption comes yeah, from the fact right. that he that he can be exploited. <laughs> right, which to which to a point is is true of the song too. But right. it's also like he's in the song. You get the feeling like he's useful. And thus accepted. Right, right. Whereas in the movie, I just feel like he's exploited. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and, or it's like um, he has a feature that's useful and beautiful, and Santa recognizes that over everyone else. Right, And right. then that kind of makes everyone else discover it. Instead yeah. of making fun of him for it. Yeah. Whereas in the movie, it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, the movie like I, Santa's like, no first one even in line when to bully left. him, you know, it, until right, <laughs> until exactly. it benefits him not to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then like he's an asshole to the elves. He's an asshole to his wife. Like I, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute or whatever. I like I like Rudolph and I like King Moonriser. Yeah. But only aesthetic wise right yeah it's a it's, um, a, it's a cute it, it, it it's it's a cute movie and it's and it's arguably more more competently made than, <laughs> than a lot of the other ones you know like uh the the songs are definitely better i mean you've got like uh johnny marks who wrote rudolph the red-nosed reindeer and then uh you know he wrote the other songs and burl Ives sang them and it's like they're like you know proper christmas songs for the most part like uh, okay okay but none of them none of them are as good as the heat miser and snow miser songs and you can fucking fight me about that like those songs are classic those songs are like i like those songs definitely better than that fucking you're a mean one mr grinch song and i hear that, that is, up and down holiday radio you know what but that I is never true hear the heat miser and snow miser song yeah it's really fucked up yeah. because because the, the, so i mean you could you could argue that the heat miser and snow miser songs are like too specific because they're just about these characters they're not really about christmas but that's exact like like you're a mean one mr grinch is just like just like a, it's like a roast. Like it's, it, it, what does that have to do with Christmas? It's just talking right. about how much of an asshole right. this guy is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. And the thing about the Grinch that people not like, people act like he hates Christmas. No, he hates the fucking Who's because yeah. they're annoying. Yeah. Like I'm on the Grinch's side. Right. I've hated people so much that I want to go into their house and like steal their shit. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So like like would you rather hear that or would you rather hear someone like gassing themselves up, it's bravado, I'm too much. Right. I'm Mr. This, Mr. That. 
And Fuck all of you. They're actually talking about I'm the about reason the Christmas. weather is the way it is because I'm a bad bitch. I'm right. Heat Miser and I'm a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Heat Miser and Snow Miser are not talking about Christmas. They well, but they say I'm Mister White Christmas. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> one line. I mean, they say the word Christmas <laughs> in it. <laughs> I'm Mister. I'm Mister Green Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it's more. It's, it's totally it's, about Christmas. It's, stati- it's factually, you know, like mathematically more Christmassy than you're a mean one, Mister Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <much>. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to me, um, the Heat Miser and Snow Miser songs are my favorite Christmas tunes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, I wanna carol and only sing those songs. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. I'm Mr. Icicle. I'm Mr. Tenbelow. Friends call me Snow Miser. Whatever I touch turns to snow in my clutch. <laughs> I'm too much. <laughs> so yeah, Year Without a Santa Claus is my favorite Christmas movie. Yeah, and Mickey Rooney as Santa. <laughs> Mickey I mean... Rooney as Santa Claus. Like, everything about it is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And like, there's like, um, Mrs. Claus becomes Santa. Right. Like, she steps in. It's she feminist. has like a main role in it. So yeah. it's, it's a feminist <laughs> film. <laughs> it's got some great tunes. <laughs> it's just an all around wonderful Christmas movie with a great message. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that that that's inspired me to uh, to make Remy watch that this week <laughs> yeah oh we should uh we we should give a short tyrese update uh oh yep we should play some like some like news music like you know like the little like you know it sounds like a i don't know anyway um <laughs> <laughs> tyrese oh, yeah. i know what you're saying but i i don't know how to solve that yeah <laughs> Uh, so um, first of all, maybe I wanted we can to... like edit Tyrese sound bites into those sounds, and that will be the update. But it'll all be Tyrese's voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I I I wanted to give an update because um, in the last episode we talked about Tyrese, and we made reference to the painting. Of um, of Malcolm X uh, baptizing Tupac uh, in the River Euphrates or whatever the whatever the fuck that painting was, um, and you talked about how when you when you saw uh, w- w- when you saw Tyrese on Cribs, he was you know pointing it out in his in his house. I later no, I didn't say that. Oh no, okay, I, I'm I'm conflating I'm conflating different stories. Um, uh, so we, we I don't talk, remember how I brought it up. I, I, I don't remember up? either. I mean, we talk. I just a, always find a way to bring we that. We talk about it literally all the time. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm 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 looking up this um, I'm looking up this this photo, and uh, and I see a blog post. Um, this is this is where I was thinking about the MTV thing. I see a blog post where somebody says that was painted by Tyrese and and like they were talking about how he was on he was on cribs and like and like showing it off and you know like saying like like explaining what the what the meaning behind it was and like Tyrese painted my favorite work of art like I can't I I'm just like I'm so I'm so blown away all these I years know, I had yeah. thought it was just some like garbage fan art that was just floating around on the internet. Yeah, but no, it's, I know that it's, it's Tyrese's, Tyrese's garbage fan art, like which is so much which funnier. Makes a lot of I, it yeah. does. It makes sense. Right. <laughs> it makes it funnier. Like it fits I, into the entire like lore. Right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was just like blown away by that revelation. Uh yeah. and then and, yeah. and, and and then also we should just a general catch up. Um, uh, he's he's continuing to. I mean, I lose haven't been, honestly. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, I have been following this, but I've been lazily following this because I don't actually care. But it is fascinating to me. Right. Um, and I, like, I thought, like, I was watching a video this morning. Um, it was, it, it wasn't a video. It was, like, it was just, like, the, basically the audio from um, the Breakfast Club talking about it. And first of all, the Breakfast Club annoys me yeah. um, for various uh, reasons. Right. And I think Charlemagne is a fucking asshole. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> But, I mean, this was, like, a good way to get my Tyrese news abridged so that I don't have to <laughs> fucking digest all of it and try to figure it out. <laughs> right. Um, so, basically, like, he is going nuts and, like, he's conflating all of his um, issues with uh, his quote-unquote psych meds. Right. <laughs> and that's what's causing him, that's what's causing him to, like get on social media and like lie like, <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> make make promises that he can't keep right. and like all known um, side effects of you know, you know psychiatric medications <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i'm sure he's like uh, like having oh yeah he's clearly having issues. a mental breakdown but it just but i, I mean it, you know there's so many things you can do you can change your dosage you can change your your meds you can yeah, you know everything like like there's there's many many options that don't involve saying that will smith and his wife gave you five million dollars to stay off social media <laughs> like that should be yeah. a last resort <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um and i guess he like said that he like married his wife to keep her in the u.s so uh. he didn't have to go to london to see his daughter so basically he like admitted to marriage fraud. right uh, yeah <laughs> he's losing his fucking mind um so yeah tyrese has um been very entertaining lately yeah yeah uh, I, I, again i i don't i also don't have a uh I, I don't have a, a really comprehensive update to give, except that um, the the train wreck is is still unfolding. So, <laughs> so maybe who who knows? Maybe next time we'll be able to 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 do yet another Tyrese uh, update. <laughs> well, you know what the thing the thing about it though is that like I just like a, a month ago or something I was saying like. Maybe more than a month ago, maybe like two months ago. I was like, I miss when Cat Williams was the headlines. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, that now it's like er- everything's falling apart. Like, right. Uh, the Trump administration is fucking shit up. Right. Um, all, all that. And I really miss when it was like the, the, the news I cared about was important. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> Cat, Cat yeah. Williams punched a child type <laughs> yeah. shit. Like uh, when Cat uh, Williams was just assaulting people, that was my favorite news period. It right. was like every morning you woke up to another amazing headline. Yeah. <laughs> and I miss that. And now I feel like Tyrese is filling that void for me. That's true. Because I, like, I, I miss having that news that I liked. <laughs> yeah. I missed when Suge Knight was like committing vehicular homicide. And, like, <laughs> I remember he was that. Blind. Yeah. And shit. Like those are those are my type of news headlines. Those were more innocent times. And I really times. miss that. And I just want to, yeah, exactly. And I just want to thank Tyrese for like filling filling that void for me. So, yeah, yeah. Um, that's uh, that is, that is true. It's, it's something to be thankful for. That um, at least we have uh, as as the fabric of our society collapses around us at least we still have tyrese to to depend on <laughs> i will say uh we, we're still accepting submissions for our prince issue uh the the submissions will be open until the end of january so uh you know over your, you still have you still have almost two months uh to get something to us we're looking for uh you know art writing and uh, you know, really, just anything that can that can vaguely fit into the concept that that is that is inspired by or somehow related to Prince. Uh, and um, you know, you can feel free to to take that in in any number of different directions. I'm I'm really uh, I'm, I'm I'm interested in seeing what people what people come up with. And uh, we've already got some submissions, and I'm excited about it. Um, you can check out the uh, the call for submissions at dystopiandanceparty.com, which is also where you can find 
everything else that we do. Um, we don't do a lot other than the the podcast anymore. But uh, but you can find older episodes of the podcast there. You can also uh, subscribe to the podcast on any of the major podcast sites, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Uh, if you subscribe, if you want to give us a rating and a review, that would be, uh, I, I don't know why I want more people to hear this, but um, for some reason I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, I do, and, and of course you can find us on uh, on YouTube and and Mixcloud, um, and uh, so you know basically there's 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 a lot of places where you can listen to this, if if that's what you want to do with your life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I and oh and uh, let's do the social media stuff too. So um, Twitter, uh, we're at Dystopian Tweets. Facebook, Dystopian Dance Party, Instagram, Dystopian Gram, because they don't let us use that many characters. Um, and you can also find me, I, I think the the main, if you if you follow me on Twitter, you'll get most of my, most of my social media uh, presence. So that's at ZC Hoskins, H-O-S-K-I-N-S. And I am on Instagram, Nazpolar, N-A-Z-Z-P-U-L-L-E-R. On Twitter, I'm also at Nazpolar, spelled the same way, Stone Friend Drusher, uh, <laughs> aka, aka Kelly, the mononym. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to build up my AKs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far, I got three. Um, Kelly, aka Nazpolar, aka the Stone Friend Drusher. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you should follow me because my Twitter is lit, but it's one sided lit where it's like I'm lit, but <laughs> right. no one gives a fuck about anything I say. Um, but I think I'm funny, so yeah, I really should follow me. I think both because, of us really deserve more Twitter followers because uh, I deserve a blue check. I deserve um, people on my shit all the time. Yeah, like having debates. The only time I ever have people in my mentions is when I like piss off some man and then he calls me ugly, <laughs> which is also not true. <laughs> right. I know. Like, like that's a, that's a fucking, that's a fucking lie. First of all, yeah. like it, it, no. And it's always some ugly motherfucker saying it to me. Right. Yeah. And then I'll just go in on him. Like seriously. But anyway, yeah, that's my Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so follow me and call me ugly. Yeah. Basically. is what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just just as long as you follow us, right? It's <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck. Follow me and then you can say whatever the fuck you yeah. want and I'll just meet you. But as long as I get that follow, I don't give a fuck. Right. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back uh, right at the end of the month to talk about our favorite music of 2017. Bye-bye. I'm Mr. Green Christmas, I'm Mr. Sun, I'm Mr. Heat Blister, I'm Mr. 101, they call me Heat Miser, whatever I touch, starts to melt in my clutch, <laughs> I'm too much. He's Mr. Green Christmas, he's Mr. Sun, he's Mr. Heat Blister, he's Mr. 101. They call me Heat Miser, whatever I touch, starts to melt in my clutch. He's too much. Thank you. I never want to know a day that's under 60 degrees. I'd rather have it 80, 90, 100 degrees. Oh, some like it hot, but I like it really hot. <laughs> He's Mr. Green Christmas. He's Mr. Sun. Sing it! He's Mr. Heat Blister. He's Mr. Too much. Too, Too much. much. 
Well, 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 if it isn't Mrs. Claus. Where's your husband? Out doing another commercial for my brother? 